All right, we are in lesson number six tonight. We will be starting out lesson number six. And I tell you, uh, I mean, the, the entire scripture is, is relevant to our everyday life. So, so I don't want you to misunderstand, but this lesson has got to be a, as relevant as anything we've ever studied. This section that we're going to look at of hearsay and the things that are slipping into our churches. I mean, all over, but right here in Vernon Parish. Yeah, it, it happens if we're not careful, and it's it's slipping into uh, our, our convention. There, there's getting to be a vein in there that is that is dangerous. Um, we need to be praying. And, and you know, I, I was talking to a friend of mine down in Florida, and uh, they, they met, their church met, and said, oh, we're separated. And and he talked to me about that. I said, well, there, you know, there's two ways to look at something like that. There's, do the strong stay in and fight the fight? Or do you move on? And that's a decision, you know, that they'll have to make. But uh, there's points to be made on both, both sides. But here, see, is what we're going to be talking about the next tonight and, and probably a, at least one, if not two more Sunday nights to cover this topic. But rejecting false teaching. And I know I've said it a whole bunch of times in, in examples, but... You know, I go back to just good old, old, old school true false tests. I don't like them because they're tricky. Because they'll make everything in there except one little old thing sound so true. And you'll convince yourself, but man, I know all of this is true. But then there'll be that one thing. And, and so if, if any part of that sentence, of that statement, or of that paragraph, if any part is false, what does it make the whole thing? False. So we can never compromise the Word of God and call it right. You can't. You cannot, you will not. And, and you know, and we need to understand why we believe what we believe because if you don't, you will get caught up into heresy. You will get caught up into false teaching. You will allow your kids to go to a church that is teaching false things. And then you're going to have to fight that fight. It's like, well, well but, but so-and-so says they don't have to do this and they don't have to do this and they have to do that and they have to do that. And we need to know what we believe. And I, I've said many times, you know, we studied the Baptist faith, the message for, gosh, I don't know how long. If, if, if they would just stick to that core, that, that just as well be the biblical Christian faith and message. Amen. It really ain't got anything to do with the denomination. It is biblically based. But uh, so the definition of hearsay, adherence to an opinion or belief that contradicts established biblical teaching or biblical authority. So, so from a biblical perspective, this is what heresy means. And before we jump into to what Peter has to say, I want to look at several verses that talk about this subject. And uh, several of, of the men in the Bible talk about this subject. 2 Timothy chapter 2 and, and verse 15. Very familiar verse that we've uh, read many times. I've preached from many times. We've talked about many times. But, but again, we need, to, we need to look at this. And it's why, it's in, why, why it's important. And, uh, you know, I, I, I push on Bible study a lot. And I will continue to do so. The Bible says, so see, Paul was aware of things going on in their day. So he's telling young Timothy here, he says, look, there, there's going to be some hard times. But Timothy, and, and, and he's talking to us, to the church too, study to show yourself approved unto God. You don't have to prove yourself to nobody else. You need to show yourself approved to the Lord. A, a workman. And so, and, and, and if we're a workman, then, then that needeth not be ashamed. Because we can rightly divide the word of truth. And, and we, can, we can spot a hearsay. When we see it, when we hear it. And a lot of the hearsay comes from someone that, that you know, says, well, yeah, I'm a Christian. But their life doesn't support it at all. They're false teaching. You know, we, we think, well, that's, that's not me. That's not me. How many times have you falsely taught when you claim to be a Christian, yet you live a lifestyle that does not support what you say you are? I mean, the word Christian in its basis means Christ-like or Christ-follower. That is what that word means. So look at uh, 1 John chapter 2. Verse 18 and verse 22. I like the little Johns. They, they are pretty close with James. First John chapter 2, verse 18. 
we get there. Little children. We're children of Christ. Little children, it is the last time. And as you have heard, that Antichrist shall come. He says, even now, there are many Antichrists, whereby we know that it is the last time. So anybody that, that doesn't uh, fully believe and support who Jesus Christ is, is an Antichrist. He says, but, but again, he says, you know, we're talking about the last times, but he says, but, but even now, there are many Antichrists, and they have crept into our churches, and I would venture to say they're teaching classes too. In, in, in general, as a whole, is what I'm talking about here. 2 John chapter 1, verse 7. Let me see, I didn't read verse 22, I'm sorry. Who is a liar? But he that denied that Jesus is the Christ. He is Antichrist that denied the Father and the Son. So when, when we got when we got major denominational leaders trying to to, to shoulder up, arm up with those that are not of Christ, we have a problem. We have a problem. So, so again, at verse 22, uh, it says there, <coughs> well, I done left. I want to go back and read that again. <coughs> Who is a liar but he that denied that Jesus is the Christ? He is Antichrist that denied the Father and the Son. So any one that does not believe in Jesus Christ as the Son is an antichrist. We need not forget that. When we go to elbow again, and it's happening, it's happening right now, today, 2022, it's happening, where we have major religious leaders that are elbowing up with Muslims and saying, we can worship together. We need to help them build a temple so they can, you know, we, can we worship the same God. No, we do not. No, we do not. They are an antichrist. So now let's go to 2 John chapter 1 and verse 7. They are, they are teaching uh, heresy is what they are doing. 2 John 1, 7. For many deceivers are entered into the world who confess not that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. This is a deceiver and an antichrist. So, look at uh, Mark chapter 13. And, and none of these are in your book, um, but, but if you want to come write them down, I've, I've got them written up here if you want to go back and read them later. Mark chapter 13. Look at verse 6. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. There have been, there will be people that come and say they are the Savior. They, they will say that. It's happened, and we don't hear a lot about it anymore because they're going to suppress anything like that. But uh, it's going to happen some more. Verse 21 and 22, same chapter. And then if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ. Or lo, he is there. Believe him not. For false Christs and false prophets shall rise and shall show signs and wonders. So they're going to do magical things, right? To seduce, if it were possible, even the elect. So uh, that the elect would be, you know, our, our top leaders. You know, our pastors, I think, would probably be at the bottom of that. But, you know, people that are calling themselves really short enough leaders, maybe the president of, of our convention, Maybe the president of whatever. Even the elect are not exempt from getting caught up in this if we're not careful. Matthew chapter 24. Verse 23 through 26. Matthew 24, 23 through 26. There, if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, and there, believe it not, or there... For there shall rise false Christ and false prophets and shall show, shall, shall show, boy, that's a tongue twister, great signs and wonders, insomuch that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Behold, I have told you before, wherefore, if they shall say unto you, Behold, 
Here is in the desert. Go not forth. Behold, he is in the secret chambers. Believe it not. So we need to be very cautious. And uh, Isaiah chapter 5 and verse 20. And folks, if you don't see this happening right now today, November, what is it, February? I don't know where that comes from. Uh, February 20th, 2022. Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil, that put darkness for light and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Woe well, unto them. That is a strong beware. And it is happening. Today, it is happening. So that brings us to our scripture in the beginning of the lesson here. Again, we'll be going through re uh, rejecting false teaching. So what, what happens? We have, I think, a couple of things going on in a lot of the churches. We have a lot of people that don't know no different. So they can't reject it. They don't, really, they don't, even, they don't study enough. They don't care enough. They're not sincere enough about what they call their faith to learn. So they don't know what to call out. It, what's false, false teaching and, and false preaching. And, and then we got others that just don't care. You know, and, and I know we've probably all said it, but I caution you from being the person that says, well, at least they're in a church. And I've heard it. I, I, maybe I've even said it. But, but what if they're in a bad one that's teaching false doctrine? I'd rather be in the house watching wrestling. Than, than being taught a path that's leading them to hell. I, I would much rather. And, and, and then we got others that, that are not strong enough in their faith to stand up. They know it, they recognize it, but they're just too weak to stand up and say anything. And then we got the, the, the others. We got the Daniels, the Shadrach, the Meshach, the Bednegos, you know, that, that, that say, I'm going to stand no matter what. I'm going to stand because my God is with me. All right, Second Peter. Chapter 2. Going with verse 1 through 3, and then verse 12 through 16. Yeah, it's in your book there, too. But, uh, I'm going to read it out of the scriptures here. 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 1 through 3. Let me get there. Wherefore, laying aside. Yep. Yeah, nope. That didn't match up. <clears throat> That was last week or a couple weeks ago. We talked about that one. Second Peter, y'all. What do y'all keep going to First Peter for? <laughs> Second Peter, chapter two, verses one through three. But there were there were false prophets also among you, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privily or sneakily or or whatever shall bring in damnable heresies. Even denying the Lord that brought that bought them, bring and bring upon themselves swift destruction. And many shall follow their pernicious or shameful ways, by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. You catch that? Shameful ways, by reasons of whom the way of the truth shall be evil spoken of. You go to talking about Jesus Christ right now. And you're going to be evil spoken of. And through covetousness or greed shall they with feigned words make merchandise of you. They're going to tell you everything you want to hear so that they can make money off of you. So whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not and their damnation slumbereth not. Their day is coming. Verse 12 through 16. But these, as natural brute beasts, made to be taken and destroyed, speak evil of things that they understand not, and, and shall utterly perish in their own corruption, and shall receive the reward of, un, uh, the reward of unrighteousness. See, their, their day's coming. As they that count it pleasure to riot in the daytime. Seen a lot of that the last couple of years. Spots they are and blemishes, sporting themselves with their own deceivings while they feast with you. 
having eyes full of idolatry, and that cannot cease from sin, beguiling unstable souls, a heart they have exercised with covetous practices, cursed children, which have forsaken the way and gone astray following the way of Balaam, the son of Bosor, Bosor, who loved the wages of unrighteousness, but was rebuked for his iniquity, the dumb ass speaking, biblical terms there y'all, with man's voice, for bad the madness of the prophet, for bad or forbid. So, whole lot going on in these scriptures here that we look at. And, and first he tells you, they're, they're, you know, beware in verse 1 through 3, you know. Beware. They are all around you. And you need to be able, because they're going to come in, they're going to be teaching false things, they're going to do it very, very secretly or privily or sneaky. And, and then they're deny, denying by, by the Lord, either by their word or by their actions. Most people it's going to be by their actions because they're going to try to pull you in, to draw you in. But when you watch them, you're going to see that they truly actually deny the Lord. Many will follow them. That's the sad thing. Many will follow. I mean, we forget. What is the description of the gate to hell? It is wide. And many will go thereof, the scripture says. And the, great, the gate to heaven is narrow. And few will go thereof. What do you think people are going to fall for when they are weak and they do not know? And so many times it is, I, I mean, I, I guess I may skip a Sunday once in a while, but I invite everybody to Bible study every Sunday. I try to. It is their choice. By, you know, talking about covetous, you know, they're worship, worshiping others. They're worshiping other things. And, uh, you know, we don't, uh, we don't need to get, get idle and we'll get caught up in this thing. They're, they're speaking uh, evil of things they don't understand. And, and a lot of people will condemn Christianity because they don't understand it. And, uh, you know, they're forsaking what's right and, and getting caught up in so many things. So the first paragraph there under the scriptures, uh, it, it says, after encouraging the church to be quick to confirm their prophetic word about Christ Jesus, Peter took on those who were false prophets, infecting the church. His words were among the most scathing written by the New Testament leaders. So he went to them and he said, hey, he said, uh, they're, 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 they're only wanting your money. They're getting rich. They're telling you things that you want to hear to make you feel good. That would be what we call today, we've labeled it as prosperity gospel. You know, hell is cold. That, that's, that's what, you know, just, just but, but, you know, be sure to make that check out to me. And their gold and, and silver and fame and rich and all these things. And, and he's saying they're coming in and they're, they're only want money. And, and, they don't, and again, don't take that one wrong because the Bible also said a laborer is what? Worthy of his hire. You know, some people will get the things, oh, well, you know, he's got a good job. He don't need the money. Um, we don't have to pay him anything. You know, some people get that mentality and the devil will do that. But um, if you're writing anything down about the laborer being worthy of his hire, 1 Timothy 5, 18, Luke 10 and 7, Matthew 10 and 10. Talks about the laborer is worthy of his hire. You know, it's uh, we need to we need to recognize and, and we need to lift up those. And you know, even the demons recognize, right? Let's look at uh, Acts chapter nineteen. I love this scripture. Acts chapter nineteen and verse fifteen. You know, Paul is ministering here at Ephesus at this point in the scriptures. Verse 15, Acts 19. And the evil spirit said, answered and said, Jesus, I know. And Paul, I know. But who are you? I mean, they're, they're, they're trying to minister in the name of Christ. I mean, the Bible says there will be many, many that will come and say, Lord, Lord, I did all this in your name. And he'll say, remind me again who you are. The evil spirits is Jesus. I know I know him. Peter, Paul, I know of him. 
But, yeah, not you, buddy. I mean, they're being called out by the evil spirit. Folks, we need to know what we know. So we need to be, the, it, 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 he talks about here in the study, quick to confirm. Peter described, you know, and I hear people say, well, well my preacher said, and I warned and I told him, you know, don't, you don't, you don't use me. You know, I've had that, that conversation with my kids that come home and ask them a question and say, well, I told them that my daddy said, or I told them that my church we believe, I said, no, we need to go right here and we need to say, well, the Bible says, the Bible says, the Lord says. So Peter described the false prophets as being motivated by covetousness, you know, regarding financial gain as the primary reason they presented a deception to the people with their inaccurate messages and heresies. Peter described their victims as unstable soul or souls or they're, they're uneducated, they're weak, they don't know any better. And in the fate of these prophets, of course, we, you know, that was pretty harsh there, what we read in the scriptures. It's utterly perish in their own corruption. Their day is going to come, no doubt. If you look at Romans chapter 12, verse 19. And sometimes we try <coughs> to put ourselves where it's not our business to put ourselves. The Bible said, you know, people done stuff and done stuff and we want to strike out. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, saith the Lord. So they're going to perish in their own corruption. So Christianity, uh, you know, the word here, see, was used different way back and, and the, the way looking at it from a biblical perspective is that uh, it's changed a little bit. And there's no em, embodiment it talks about up here of definitive given truth in a heresy. Jesus, however, stated boldly, I am the way, I'm the truth, I am alive. No one comes to the Father but by me. So anybody that denies the Son, they are an antichrist. A person who believed what he wanted. So a heretic. Uh, and, and it's basically you know, kind of the same thing now. A person who believed what he wanted to believe rather than accept the truth of God. You know, like we've talked about before. God said it. That's it. Right? No matter if you believe it or not, it doesn't change the truth. It doesn't change the fact of the matter. False prophets attempting. And this is where it really gets down to. If you can't see this today, you are under a rock somewhere a whole lot. False prophets attempting to persuade people to believe things they wished were true rather than what God has said was true. They subtly set themselves up to be fine Christians under the guise of self-defined piety. They attempted to convince the believers in the early church to exercise their right to choose what worked for them. I think as Brother Corey said here, a while back, one of our men studied, wasn't it? And the, one of the new phrases is just do you. Just do you. Anything you want. Anything you want, just do you. No. Don't do that. Because that's going to get you in a bad place. We need, to, we need to do what Jesus has called us to do. So the message, though, is certainly enticing. It says, uh, one to those, enticing one to those who were not well grounded in their faith. And a lot of people say, oh, it don't matter if you go out and party just as long as you come to church. It's all good. You know, I hear, I hear so many people excuse sin so many times. It's going to be okay. If you don't stop living that way, it ain't going to be okay. That's right. I mean, if you don't stop ignoring God and walking up in church on Sunday, standing up here like you, a glorified, living for Christ Christian, but then you go and you live in sin, it ain't going to be okay. Right. God cannot bless that. That is false teaching to your neighbor is what that's doing. And some people say, well, you know what the law says. If the law don't back what God says, then it ain't worth the paper it's written on. For the disc it's safe. Now, I don't guess they even have disc anymore, do they? Whatever. The thumb drive. A Christian who does not accept 
truth of Christ Jesus in its entirety without changing is a person who's rejecting the truth. You know, according to false teachings, again, uh, of the false prophets, a, a person could have what he wanted and what God wanted simultaneously. <laughs> Peter said, no, no. You, you know, I, and I say it, and I say it, and I say it, you know, if there's been no change, then there's been no change. If the only difference between you and your unchurched and, and, and blatant unsaved friend is that you come to church, there is no difference. You're going to go to hell from around here. On the pew. The devil would like nothing more. Got you right where he wants you. I mean, you coming in and you lead the people down the wrong path. And, and again, a Christian who does not accept truth of Christ Jesus in its entirety without changing. You, you're, you're rejecting truth. You're denying truth. And, and, and I'm not trying to be judgmental. I'm trying to be truthful. Folks are afraid to tell the truth. They're afraid to call it like it is nowadays. Those who teach heresy, they teach others to sin while professing to love the Lord. You tell me we ain't doing that today. You tell me that ain't happening in a lot of our churches today. Do you, heretic, or do you hear heretical statements voiced by people who call themselves Christians all the time? Yeah. All the time. You know, I did my devotion last Friday about what comes out of our mouth. I got more comments and more messages and more texts about that. And, and, and one, one guy, pretty prominent guy here in Leesville, he messaged and says, was that specifically for me? I, I started taking back out on that. You've been living. <laughs> but uh, I said, that was just what the Lord laid on my heart. And, and I had a lot of people that said, man, that, that is my greatest battle. Is what comes out of my mouth. And you know, the Bible, you know, we, we talked a little bit about dietary restrictions this morning uh, with Daniel, Magic, Meshach, <coughs> all the guys. And, uh, you know, whatever the other names was, that I, I can't even remember to pronounce them. And, you know, they were, they, they said, look, we don't want the king's meat. We don't want this. Let us just eat this. And uh, about dietary restrictions and things like that. And, you know, we can get caught up in so many things that don't matter. And, and Jesus corrected all that later. And, and, and next thing you know, they were using even stuff like that. As, a, as it was hearsay, the way they were teaching. So we have got to stick to what God has called us to do. You can't do what you want and love God too, and it be okay. Yes, I hear it all the time. Has hearsay infected your church or denomination? I don't know. Has it? I want you to, I mean, I don't, don't answer that out loud, but I think in general, yes. Yes. And, and, and there is things that, that have leaked into our denomination. But, but see, Cayman, we're autonomous. We're our church. We're, we're the church of, of the Lord. And uh, that, that is where we need to stay. But it's leaking in our churches. It's leaking in our denominations. We're getting, we're get, in a lot of ways, we're getting, we're, we're getting more, more on, on our denomination than we are on our Savior. We're losing sight in a lot of cases if we're not careful but as, as hard as some of this sounds, you know, some people will hear this and, 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 you know, they say, well, I've been teaching puggles or whatever. I don't know who teaches puggles. I'm sorry. If, if you were here, well, I'm, I'm just going to quit because I'm messing up every day. Don't quit. Don't, don't say I'm not worthy and walk away. Say I'm going to change today. And I'm going to start moving forward. And I've talked to you guys about that a lot too. It is, you know, don't let anything I say stop you from moving forward. Let it, let it stop you from going backwards. And say, I'm going to change today. Right now. Right here. And, and, and just like when, when uh, over in the scriptures when he says, This day you have witnessed before yourselves and God that you're going to follow him. That's who it's between. So I like this application for today. And this sounds exactly like a conversation that, that I would hear. I've got one more scripture I want to look at before we get into the. It's, it's just a little illustration. Matthew chapter 10, verse 37. And then we'll read that illustration. And that'll wrap us up for today. Matthew 10 and 37. <clears throat> He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy. That's not, that's not the verse. I wrote down the wrong address. I'll have to get back to y'all. 
so skip that one, y'all. Delete that from the record. Is that what they do in court? Scratch that from the record. It's probably something 1037, but it wasn't Matthew. Okay, application for today. I get to write them down, and, and maybe I just can't read my writing. This is a conversation that, that I think we could hear today, and sadly, I think it could just as well happen in our church. In, in, just in general. I don't think Jesus really meant that. I, I've heard that. Did he say it? One, one man said it. If, if he even said it, he didn't put down people of other religions. Yes, he did. And, and, and he says, I know that my God would never send anybody to hell. I have literally been told that. My God is loving. A second man said with confidence. You sound so intolerant, a third person chimed in. God accepts everybody just as they are. That's right, a fourth person said. Jesus died for the sins of everybody. Nobody is going to hell. Everybody has already been saved by Jesus. They have not opened their Bible. It says you are acting as if there is absolute truth. There's no truth that is universal and absolute for everybody. Each person finds his own truth. Yet another person added, every religion leads a person to God if a person practices that religion faithfully. I've heard people Baloney. in churches today say that. I didn't hear it today, but in today's time. And there is no sin either said a sixth person. Sin is just a metaphor for deep misunderstandings and disagreements that lead to bad behavior. We need to love one another more and, and seek to understand one another more. That will put an end to sin. Love is the highest form of tolerance for other people and their opinions. If there is an absolute sin, it's intolerance. And you know the people that scream intolerance are the most intolerant people I've ever been around in my life. I work, I work for an agency like that. We gave rise to this onslaught of adamantly stating, stated opinions. A person had said simply, I take Jesus at his word. And Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Amen. So here's the question. You know, if you've ever been around anything like that, what would you have said? I just want you to think about this. I'm not asking for your answer out loud. But what would you have said if you had been in the room where these statements were voiced? I've heard most of these statements specifically. If not all of them, I've heard it sometime or another. And in some cases, I was too immature in my faith to call that Greek word Brother Goins uses, baloney. Baloney. But way too many people in a conversation like this have stayed quiet. Or they just got up and walked off. Excused themselves from it. Maybe it was out of fear. Maybe it was out of shame. Maybe it was out of a weak faith. And, uh, but what, what, you know, just think about that. What would you have said when you have people saying, all of these things. And these things are said all the time. All the time, And some of these things are preached from the pulpit. Some of these things are. Right. Oh, you can do whatever you want. Just as long as you love God. Hmm. <laughs> I mean, that didn't work for the children of Israel. Ever. Through the Bible. They would do good. Then they would backslide. And God would punish them. They would do good. And they would backslide. And God would punish them. But when they were doing good. When they were serving God and loving God. He blessed them. No matter what. Right. And, and then you got others that, that and, and then we say, well, gosh, all I got to do is be good, and then I'm going to be blessed. And, and well, what about Joseph? That didn't work out for him, but he always had joy because he knew God's on my side. I mean, you know, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego. I got the names that time. They said, King Nebuchadnezzar, you know, we appreciate the job opportunity, but you you brought us to our line. We're not going to cross it. He says, well, I'm going to have to burn you up, man. I really don't want to. They said, it's okay, King. God saves is good. If he don't, that's okay too. But we're going to serve him, not you. And what would we do in those conversations? Because if, if you haven't heard those, number one, you ain't been listening. 
or you ain't heard it yet. You're going to. I assure you. And we need to have our children prepared. We need to have a safe enough zone when they come home and say, well, Daddy, you know, I had, I had one of mine come home the other day, and, and this will rub a lot of people wrong. But look at the Bible and see what it says. He said, Daddy, I didn't think a woman was supposed to be a preacher. He said, well, according to the Word of God, baby, they're not. According to the Word of God. It is well defined in the Scripture. But you see, today, that, that's not a popular thing to say. I'm not just get, well, you two ain't going to kick me out because they don't care about that. But, but it'll make some other churches mad. Well, I know everybody talks about our church because our, our, our pastor's a woman. But they sure know a lot about the Bible. Well, they, they have ripped out one section for sure. You know, and we've got to be able to have that conversation with our kids. But we have to know enough to be able to talk to our kids and, and not say, well, I know it's in there somewhere. Find it and show them. So they don't have to say what well, Daddy said or Mama said. Or my papa was a preacher and he said. <laughs> that you need to be able to, to help them find that so that they know the truth. Because the Bible says when you know the truth, it's going to make you free. And, and knowing it is applying it. But I'm going to stop right there and we will pick up uh, next Sunday night under supplementary scriptures to consider. So any last thoughts? Comments? I got my bulletproof vest on. If y'all want to throw a dart at me, that's okay. Yes, sir. And again, nothing I've said, don't let it make you leave here and think, well, I am so unworthy. I mean, honestly, you are. It's like I told a guy one time. He said, man, I feel so unworthy. When I first started working with teenagers, about 2003 or four, and, uh, I, you know, my, my past was just weighing on me, and I told my pastor, I said, I just don't feel worthy. He said, you're not. That's right. He said, but Jesus is. That's and right. he'll use you if you'll let him, so. Don't let it stop you. Let it help you push you forward. So let's stand. We'll close. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you, Lord, and we thank you for the plain old truth that you have written in your word. Lord, for plain old people just like us, Lord, you used everyday, average people. But Lord, you didn't leave them like you found them. You cleaned them up. You put them to work, Lord, and I'm so thankful that you did. That there's an example for each and everything that I may face in my life in your word. Lord, I pray that we can strive to live by it, that we get stronger each day by drawing closer to you each day. Lord, we know you will bless our obedience, Lord, because your word assures us of that. Lord, I thank you for each and every word that you have put before us today. I pray for each person, Lord, adult or child that is here today. Lord, I pray that we hear your word, that it pierces our soul and divides what needs to be divided, Lord, that it may impact us in a way that we draw closer to you. Lord, we thank you and we love you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.